Just going on then, so we, we had Group A and there's there's a team in Group B that I think you know is, is going to be everybody's second favourite team, um, Denmark, obviously, given the, the tragic circumstances in which their opening game against Finland um, in front of a packed park and stadium was mired. Um, obviously, we're incredibly grateful that, that Christian Eriksen has shown signs that he's on the mend following his, his cardiac arrest. Um, and, you know, w- without him, Denmark are going to face Wales in the round of 16, um, which should be should be a great game, actually, based on especially that final Denmark game, the 4-1 win over Russia, uh, again, in front of a packed stadium. Um, but also Wales, you know, they've, they've they've battled their way out of the group. They've, I mean, that, that 2-0 win against Turkey was, was a real sort of a sliding doors moment for this tournament, I think. It was where everybody sort of went... Yeah, we're we're in we're in the midst of a Euros here. This is a you know it was a little bit of a shock, but at the same time it was deserved. Um, but yeah, that 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 Denmark team. Um, I've I've kind of I wanted to to say that they were going to be my dark horses, but I think uh, with the, the the tournament tree, the path that they could potentially have now that they are through the groups, um, that's that's one which could be one to look out for. Um, but in terms of a player, um, I'm very much looking forward to see more of Mikkel Damsgaard. And that's because I just think he's such an effortless, effortless footballer. Um, for anybody who isn't aware, I mean, myself and Stephen Ganavis, we discussed him on the pod uh, well, a couple of what, a couple of months back now in our, our Serie A standout stats episode um, with him uh, being at Sampdoria uh, at the moment. Um, he's 20 years old. He's a he's a, he's a le- he's listed as a left winger, but I'm sure Lee, you'll agree with me that he definitely operates in central spaces. He's simply not a a, a left winger. Um, but he's in terms of sort of his background, you know, he's from uh, Ulinga in the east of Denmark with a population of only around 10,000, um, played for, for his local club for about eight years before being scouted uh, by FC Nordsjælland, who obviously do fantastic things uh, in Danish football. And that was at the age of 13, 13 12, 13, um, and then made his debut for Nordsjælland at, at 17. Uh, interestingly, uh, under Kasper Hjulman, uh, who is the Danish head coach right now, so there's there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of follow on there, um, but yeah, he's he, he's played predominantly at, at central midfield, centre forward, occasionally off the left at, at Nordsjælland, um, but typically, you know, he, I mean, under Ranieri at Sampdoria, he's typically played on on the left hand side of sort of a, a four four two, but it's not been as a winger, it's definitely been more of a an inside attacking midfielder, an inside forward, um, but you know, he's. I mean, he, he he's he's a very very good creator. I think um, he's he's added a, a bit of finish into his game. Um, you know that kind of switched in his final year at Den, in Denmark, um, which I think subsequently earned him his move to Sampdoria. Um, but I think that was a reflection of how you know how high his potential can be because Sampdoria typically scout very well. Um, so for you know for anybody who isn't aware of the work that Sampdoria have done in the transfer market, you know they signed Damsgaard for six million euros. Uh, they also signed um, Milan Skriniar from MSK Zelina for five million. I think that was in 2015-16. Uh, Lucas Torreira from Pescara for three million. Uh, Patrick Schick from um, Sparta Prague for, for four million euros. Um, Karol Linetti from Lech Poznan for three million. And the best of all, uh, Bruno Fernandes from Udinese for six million euros, all told. Um, they do scout very well. Um, but in terms of Mikael Damsgaard, Lee, I, I don't know whether I mean you. I, I know you'll have seen that, that that final game against against Russia, and where he was he was excellent. I think even from the first few moments where he's kind of just playing one twos in the corner and knocking it around the Russian players, kind of just the, the last minute sneaking out of pressure. Um, but I don't know what you. I mean. From from what you've seen of him at Nordsjælland, as I know you'll have seen him there, but also at Samp and, and this year with with Denmark, um, what is it about him that you know is do, do you, essentially? Do you agree with my sort of assessment that he's probably an exciting one to watch out for in the knockout rounds? Oh, I definitely do. But first, before we get on to Damsgaard, I just think that we should maybe try to limit the the Patrick Sheik um, name get. <laughs> it's all smell a bit raw, to be honest. <laughs> my, I'm, I'm getting name. flashbacks, yeah. Yeah, too, too many flashbacks. That, that meme of David Marshall trying to get back to his goal, it's just going to haunt me for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting back on Damsgaard, I think that, I mean, you, you just talked about the fact that he's worked on his finishing a little bit and people who haven't seen him play apart from at these Euros will be thinking to that goal at Russia and going, what do you mean he's, he's struggling to finish? Because that was quite the goal that he curled in against the Russians. Um, but that's certainly not been a large part of his game. You're absolutely right that he's a creator. Um, 
even playing for Sampdoria. What's really interesting, first of all, is he's a 20-year-old 20 who's just moved from Denmark, and yes, they paid a bit of money for him, but he played 2,273 minutes this season for Sampdoria. Now, that's not insignificant when you consider the the tactical and, and technical rigours, if you like, of Serie A and Italian football. It sometimes takes players a little while to settle in and, and find their find their groove. Um He's also had 0.48 goal involvements per 90. Goal involvements are a combination of goals and assists. So just how many times you have either created or scored a goal for your team. And that's nearly one goal in every two games that he has been responsible for, if you like, which, again, is, is really, really good numbers for somebody who's only 20 years old and he's playing in that position on the left of a 4-4-2. Um, you're absolutely right that he plays on the left, but that's only in name because he will occupy the half spaces more and more what really caught my eye about Damsgaard when he was still at Norgeland was that how often you watched them play and he was just in a pocket of space and it always seemed effortless he always just seemed to to drift away and create separation from defenders and then the ball would find him and defenders would suddenly be turning because they've lost him and they don't know where he's gone. He's just five yards away collecting a ball. But those five yards give him the cushion to collect the ball and then to play forward and be progressive and, and be creative. You get different kinds of attacking players like Damsgaard. Um, the way that I always think about it, my my reference point for a player like Damsgaard, who always seems to be in space, it's similar to Thomas Muller at Bayern in Germany, but Mesut Ozil, for all the the stick that he used to get and got in the end from Arsenal fans and fans of of English football, who didn't quite, I don't think they quite saw what other people saw in Mesut Ozil, but Ozil had this ability. And when you look at packing stats, packing stats are, are advanced data that, that's from a company called Impact in Germany. I've written an article about it before. If anyone's interested in reading it, then send me a, a message on Twitter or something and I'll, I'll drop you a link. Um, but packing basically gives you points, give every, every player points for the amount of players that get taken out from the opposition through a pass, a forward pass. So if I passed the ball to you, Joe, and you were behind two opposition players, I would get given two points. But if I passed the ball sideways to you and you were still in front of the opposition players, I'd get no points. Packing also give points for the player who receives the ball. So again, if I passed the ball to you and you were behind two opposition players, then you would also get two points for that. Mesut Ozil always scored astronomically in terms of packing, and Damsgaard is the same. He always seems to find a way to be there to receive the line-breaking pass, which is key for a team who try to progress the ball. And then you take an Ozil, and people think that he never seems to do much, he never seems to dribble or beat a player. And then the comparison was always at the time with Eden Hazard for Chelsea, a slightly different position, but he would get the ball and they'd be really busy because he's immediately engaging and dribbling past people, and it looks exciting. But Ozil never had to dribble past people because he was always in space when he received the ball, and it's similar to Damsgaard. But for all that, Damsgaard's dribbling per 90 numbers are also quite high, 6.1 dribbles per 90 last season. So he is a player who looks like he's going to become really, really interesting for Sampdoria. And I really don't think it'll be long before bigger clubs in Serie A are sniffing around the likes of Inter, the likes of Juventus will already be fully aware of him. I tell you what, Lee, if you end up picking a pass to me, that's one hell of a ping. <laughs> that is some serious distance and yardage you're getting on that ball. But no, I I know where you're coming from. It was um it it, it was it was actually his pressing that first stood out to me, especially at least in the statistics for Damsgaard. Yeah. Um obviously I didn't have I didn't have that data for his time at Nordsjöland. Um but it was always the fact that when they were out of possession, I'd be like, okay, you know what? He's actually quite busy off the ball as well, which yeah. is usually you know usually a good sign. Um, you know, and it was it wasn't as if it was scattergun, it was actually quite coordinated, and you thought, well, that's a sign of an intelligent player. Um, this season, obviously that it was quite validating to see that backed up in, in the numbers um at, at, at Samp. Uh, and I'm sure it'll be exactly the same um this over the course of the European Championships when a decent enough sample size has been um has been acquired. But um yeah, he's uh, he's he's a fantastic player. And you know, we, we, we talk about packing stats there and, and I'd recommend that art, that article to anybody as uh, as you know if, if you'd like to to know more on it. I think I mean Lee's explanation's as clear as you, you're gonna get essentially, but it's um yeah it's a very valuable but complex um sort of metric. Um but it does you know you when you see the when you see the players who are at the top of those 
those standings, you do see the value in it and why if you see a name which you perhaps don't recognise, it's quite interesting because you think, okay, now I'll look out for that and, and Damsgaard's definitely one of those players. But, you know, going forward, I mean, we've talked about that goal he scored against Russia. I thought it was absolutely excellent. You know, just the way he peels it. It's not even he, he peels into space. He just has an appreciation of where to be. You know, he's in he's in the zone 14. For anybody who isn't aware of zone 14, that's the, like, you know, a segment of the pitch just outside the penalty area, um, which is sort of adjacent to the to the D on the edge of the penalty area. He was just, he just found some space in there, um, which is a lot easier said than done. Um, kind of scanned, scanned, received the ball, took a touch, moved it to one side, set himself really well, and then just floated it in. And he thought, well, first of all, it's a great technique on that, but it's something which he's he's shown that he can do. He can get, he can strike them well from range, um, which is, again, in tournament football, as we've seen with players like Luka Modric, that can be extremely valuable. It can turn a game. Um, yeah, he's he's got fantastic technique. Positionally, as we've discussed, very versatile um, which I think is a strength, but maybe not as a centre forward, which people may see that he's played, but I think his his efficiency is better in the sort of the the line behind the centre forward. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of, you know, his his attacking output, shot locations seem quite good. Um, you know, his, his creativity in between those lines, if he's not creating for himself, he's creating for others. Um, he's able to thread those balls through. Um, and we, we forget he's 20 years old, you know, to be making all of these good decisions in multiple areas of the games, especially in attacking transitions, uh, the combinations that he can play to take players out of the game, you know, knocking it. Um, I was reading, actually, there's a piece on, on Scouted Football uh, by Rahul Aya. Um, I hope I pronounced that right, by the way, Rahul. Um, but he uh, he wrote on, on Damsgaard before he got his move to, well, before he moved formally to Sampdoria, it had already been signed off. But um, he wrote about the combination play that Damsgaard can get involved in, um, and it was a it was really really interesting because you know he'll he'll do this move where the striker will drop off, Damsgaard will come into the middle, he'll play a sort of a quick one two with the the striker, and he'll run around the blind side of the 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 the, the defender or the midfielder, and essentially with a quick one two. He's, he's taken one or two players out of the game and you think that's extremely, extremely valuable in attacking transitions. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he, he's a flighty, dancer-like player. Um, and I've, in my notes here, for some reason, when I was watching the Russia game, the Russia-Denmark match, I've written, which I have not remembered until right now, is that he's like a startled reindeer. Um, so... <laughs> And that is that 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 can be um that, that that might be where I leave it on Damsgaard because I think that's I don't think I'm gonna top that to be honest. Um, I'm gonna use that in the ports going forward, there's no doubt. <laughs> he's a start he's he's very much like Mikkel Damsgaard, like a startled reindeer. Yeah. Um but yeah, he's um he's one definitely one to, to keep an eye on uh, in for Denmark in the latter stages. 